Good afternoon, Jim Penman. Just check. All right, should be ready to go. Good afternoon, Jim Penman. Thank you for allowing your time. We we thank you. Welcome to moneystream.com.au. My name's John. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? Yeah. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, meet uh, the founder and CEO of Jim's Group with uh, 4,200 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand and Canada. And um, Jim, Jim uh, has provided his valuable time uh, to chat with us today on uh, small business with his vast experience um, of the Jim's Group empire. And uh, I hand you over now to Jim, who's going to give us uh, an insight into small business uh, through his experience, through his eyes. Over to you, Jim. Well, <laughs> I didn't want you to give a talk. I thought you'd ask questions. It's probably the best way to do it. Um, well, I'd say, you, you, say you're from recording a, this, are you? For, for, from a from a bit small business aspect, um, uh, in ter in terms of um, small business, especially in this current uh, economic climate with the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic that's really hit hard globally, um, how, how how would you, in your experience, uh, you know, allow someone or provide information to someone that's struggling, um, tearing their hair apart, and looking to start some sort of business? What are, what are the main things to look out for um, in starting a business and also uh, not only marketing, but to retain your customers through your, in my, in my view, your brilliant customer service, because I've used your services quite a number of times. Yes, well, I guess that's, that's the key to it, isn't it? The, uh, <laughs> we've actually had a, a, a brilliant um, epidemic apart from the the um, eight weeks of victorian lockdown which was pretty horrifying um mm. we've done very well leads are up and franchises are way up we've grown nearly 10 percent in the last six months and, and leads are up even more so the biggest problem we've got is is unserviced work about one job in three now is unserviced which is about two hundred and twenty thousand leads last year we couldn't handle so that, that's probably our number one issue we simply can't grow fast enough to meet the demand but look, the key is basically customer service. Back in the, um, when I started franchising back in the, in the early 90s, um, work was quite hard to come by. We would, um, I had teams of canvassers knocking on doors trying to find work. These days, the work is so plentiful that um, in quite a lot of situations, we take about 140 bucks per month per franchisee for marketing. Quite often we actually have to give it back. You know, we, we've given back the best part of a million dollars over the past year or two because we just can't spend it because there's so much work around. So the key is the key is customer service. And, and to get going can be a problem. In, in, division, in businesses like ours in cleaning and gardening, um, best estimate is, and you can look this up online if you like, like the, um, the Cleaning and Janitorial Service Association of, in America, um, between 90 and 95% of small service businesses fail in their first year. With us, it's around about 10, 11%. The biggest single difference is the fact that we've got so much work that we can get people off the ground. But once you get going, then if your service is good, it's not that difficult. You go into a once off job, you do such a brilliant job, you turn into a regular, you upsell other services to the client, which is a huge part of business success. You get referrals to other people. Um, and there's, there's simple ways to do that, by the way. If you've done a great job, you just simply go to the client, give them your business card, um, hand out hand and say, here's our business card, and here's a couple of extra in case you want work done. So little, little phrases like that, if you've delighted the client, are really, really powerful. Um, you upsell. You, you say things like, well, you know, is there anything else I can do for you? If, if, there's, if there's anything else I can do for you while I'm here, let me know. I'd happy to, if you were a gardener, I'd happy to, you know, clear your gardens or roof your rubbish. Or if you're a cleaner, you might offer to clean their oven or wash their windows or put their laundry through or make their beds, whatever. It doesn't matter what you do, just offer something that you can make money out of. And we normally recommend at least 60 bucks an hour for our franchisees. So we're not cheap. Yeah. And um, yeah, in my view, um, yeah, I've used your services quite a number of times, and I've 
I've got a, uh, whilst I'm not here to endorse any, any business, although I've, I do commend you because you've helped me out on various invitations where you've helped me out quite a bit. And um, yeah, the audience has been um, grateful. Uh, but yeah, I, I find that with your services, it's, um, it's professional, it's on time. Um, you know, it, it's, it's done diligently, professionally. And um, yeah, everything you've mentioned, uh, I've got to say is 100% uh, in, in my view. Um, with, with, uh, with people starting a small business, uh, as you've mentioned, because yours, yours is, um, you know, right up there, I guess, uh, and, and, you know, you've been so successful so, for so many years, quite a few decades, in fact. Um, how, how would you, how would you uh, describe it to a new business owner that hasn't been in business before, but looking at the challenging aspect of, say, starting something, you know, with normal Joe Blow, uh, versus uh, you know something that you're offering in your in your space um, where they're you know they're going to be successful rather than sort of you know start a small business I don't know where I'm going I've got no experience with all the backup that you've got all the support um, how, how would you describe that to someone looking to enter the small business space look it's it's um there's some people that do make it as independence and I take my hat off to them. Um, there's a young guy in my church actually that I've been um, coaching um, and he couldn't afford a franchise. He just didn't have the money for it. Mm. And so I just give him advice and this, and he's, he's, it's taken him a long while. It's taken him years to get going, but the benefit I had is that I was a student at the time. So I wasn't exactly relying on it. And I was prepared to work pretty cheap in the beginning. And I just, I just went from there. I'm, I'm this is back in, I started doing gardening, when I was in 1970, when I before I even started uni university, and I would um, I put a notice in a, in a um, the window of a news of a of a hardware store, a dollar fifty an hour, which even in those days was incredibly cheap. But I've been working on a farm where I was only paid about eighteen bucks a week, including keep. So <laughs> that was pretty good by comparison with that. And then I did that for a couple of years, and then I decided to go for wider. So I did some little leaflets, just little bits of paper that big printed at the university press and I offered to work for three bucks and that was and that was um three bucks an hour and I thought that was pretty expensive but people thought it was incredibly cheap they kept on telling me so I thought well maybe I'm not charging enough so then not long afterwards I um I, I wanted to buy a car because I actually I thought it would impress the girls which, which was complete failure I must say didn't didn't work at all but that was my reasoning for it. So buying a car, which cost me about $1,600, was quite expensive. I got an old Kingswood um, and um, I had to pay for it. So I decided, well, why don't I mow lawns? Because then I could actually quote by the job instead of by the hour. So I got this little thing, this little phrase, most lawns $5, which again, doesn't sound much, but you could buy a house in those days for 30,000. So it's more than, it's more than you think. It, it's not too bad. Yes. Um, and because I had a car, I could I could pull a lawnmower around too, so that, that was able to do that, and that worked out pretty well. And I just I just did really good service for clients. I just I, I've always been very emotional about service. It just it just offends me. One of the in the early days, for example, I was um, I used to get very bugged by edges because in a lawn mowing job, the edges are the hardest thing to do well. And and I used to have a a, a, a spoke blade which go on the concrete mower strips and. And that made a pretty good edge, especially if you run the left-hand side of the mower along the mower strip and you cut, you suck the grass out. So that was good. But then there was all these other edges around trees and retaining walls and, and stuff, where, which you couldn't do. And there was just no way to do it in those days. You just couldn't in, in the 1970s. And, you, and, and nobody ever asked me, but it always bugged me. I always leave it and I think, what could you do about this? And one day I was in my mower shop which I used to spend a lot of time in because I didn't look after my mowers very well. I was always breaking them down. And uh, the old uh, Tom was there. And because I was such a good client, he used to um, he used to give me priority. So one day when he was trying to fix one of my mowers, I'd wrecked again. I was wandering around the shop and I saw this funny looking gadget in the corner. It was a long pole with a handle in the middle and up one end you had this little engine. And then the other end, there was this weird looking plastic thing with a um, white cord sticking out which I'd never seen before. And I said to, to, to him, what is it? And he said, that's a brush cutter. I said, what's that? He said, I'll show you. So he picked it up. 
started it. He said the little whizzy things in nylon cord and it, it spins around and cuts the grass without damaging the trees. You don't bring back the trees. So I said, how much is it? Because I had this in my mind, you see, these edges thing would really bug me. Yeah. And so he gave me the price. Oh, that's a lot of money. It's more than a mower. No, it didn't have much money in those days. I think it was about 250 bucks, which was a lot in the 70s. It really was. You yeah. just, as I said, you could buy a house for 30 grand. Mm. Um, so I, I got one and I practiced with it and I became good at it. I could do all the edges really, really well, better because I had more experience than con clients could do it themselves. You see a client with a, with a stepper and weed whacker and they're horrible. They just muck all over the place. But I got a really neat, clean line. And then when I'd finished the, the notice strip in the front and the back, I, I'd use this thing and I'd be walking down the driveway and I'd keep it going and I'd zip the grass from the cracks and blow them off afterwards. And people would look at the lawns I'd done and say, I never knew my lawn could look this good. Mm. And I used to turn once off to the regular and referrals and all kinds of stuff. It just, it was easy. And I was fanatical about turning up. I just never, ever, ever wanted to let any client down. I remember once I let down a couple of clients, I missed out in my diary and I felt so terrible. And it wasn't as I was short of work. It's just, to me, to let down a client is, is awful. And it's the same sort of upset I feel today, too. I go through all the low-ranked surveys that we do. We, we, get, we do said, hundreds of thousands of surveys a year. And I go through the look at individually and see what's went wrong. What can we do? How can we improve it? How can we do it better? What can we do to fix this? I just, I'm fanatic about service. And that, more than anything else, is... is why I was successful, but starting part-time made it easy. So by the time I came, went full-time, by the time I failed in my academic career, um, I kind of knew what I was doing. Yeah, no, it's very, very interesting. Once again, with all your experience, and of course, um, you know, you're the founder and the CEO of uh, Jim's Group, uh, which is based Australia, New Zealand and Canada. Um, yeah, it's experience. Uh, you have all the experience. So people looking for, um, a way out uh, and, and the current client we're in also uh, where uh, clients are time poor, whether they're working around the clock, shift work and goodness knows what, um, these type of services are probably in, um, uh, you know, in high demand more than ever because people mm. are just working around the clock. As you mentioned, you know, the, the lady wants her oven clean, he wants his lawns cut, the trees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and obviously, as you've explained that um, with, through your lead generation, um, you know, you're knocking back one in three jobs, which is, it's just incredible. It's an incredible amount. Um, I can't imagine what sort of amount it would be. Um, but yes, people... Sorry, more, more than 220,000 leads last year. It's, yeah, it's that's... that's an, I was asking a girl in the call centre about today, I was talking to her about it, what's it like to knock back all these jobs? Is it sometimes people... Are nice about it and sometimes they just crack it they just yeah. get so irate and i got this lecture letter lecturing me about about how bad my service how i don't understand customer service because he, he wants to use it for gym's fencing just wrote back and i said what can i do i can't put untrained unreliable people in or, or I'll, I'll risk our reputation the reason people want to use this is because we're good and you can't do that if you just take on anybody and that's that's the mistake people make so it's not a good solution. We've really got to try and work out a way of, of taking a lot more French. We need to grow faster. We need we could have, we could do a double the franchises we've got, and we still wouldn't run out of work. It's yeah. Once again, um, you know, um, commend you on that, and also um, to to back up your claim there. Yeah, it's it's incredible that um, yeah some businesses will do the job no matter what, and then it's compromised the service. Whereas your your, your code of ethics, if I can describe it that way, is the reverse and it's paying dividends because you're offering, offering quality work by, um, you know, people in the field that really value what they're doing. You know, they've got a passion for what they're doing. And I think clients value that um, in terms of, um, you know, sticking with Jim's group. And, 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 the interesting and I guess thing that's... Is that they, they value it more than price, or at least the clients we want. If a, look, if a client really wants a cheap price, they'll go to high pages and get five quotes. And the, the experience is pretty awful. It really is from what I've heard. Sometimes you can get a good one, but usually it's price sensitive. We do not, we're not interested in that market at all. I tell my franchisees emphatically in no uncertain terms, do not ever compete on price. Actually, I was, we were doing trains today. I was sitting at lunch with somebody who, who was buying a franchise. This, this guy was buying fencing, which is fantastic. And he's got a sales background, which is even more fantastic. And he said, what got him really interested 
is his wife calls up to get things done and she always calls Jim's and he says don't you get composed quotes he says no I just get Jim's I don't get anybody else yeah. that's what usually happens people just yeah. call us and they don't call a competitor yes especially if our guys get back to the client really really fast yes yes and I again um I um I I, I talk from my own experience I have done that myself um and I must say yeah that the the service people that come out for whatever service they provide they're just professional um you know they make it as easy for the client example if you need the lawn mow you don't have to be there you know send you the invoice they do a great job they follow up and uh yeah i i, I can't speak highly highly enough of the gyms group personally um it's, now it's, also, made a, it's also made a trust too and this is this is where we have an advantage that's very hard for an independent to match because our people are all insured, all public risk to, to $10 million minimum. They've all got police checks. So anybody yes. who's you know been in jail for a criminal offence, there's not many people really, but we do unfortunately have to weed them out. It's just not something you can take a risk on. Um, and the fact is something goes wrong, we'll fix it. We have what's called a warranty fund, which every franchisee contributes to when they, when they join. And then if anything goes wrong, um, well, first of all, the franchisee has to fix it if they're there, but if they've left, we just fix it up. We, we fixed up one fence a couple of years back. It's a $120,000 job. We did the whole thing again because five years ago, somebody had done it not quite right and, and it started to show problems. So it doesn't matter what the problem is, we'll always fix any genuine problems. So that that's hard to match as an independent, but it's still possible. You know, you were asking about getting the business before. Um, it's much easier if you can franchise. It's a better way. But I'd also say to people, be very careful about what you get into. And one of the biggest mistakes people do is they don't do their homework. And one of the things that I always suggest, if you're looking at any kind of franchise, and don't forget there's many, many more besides us. Um, we, don't, we don't even go into a whole lot of areas. The one thing you must, must, must do is ring as many franchisees as possible. Um, and ask them what the experience is, what it's like. Just ask them for a candid opinion. Is it a good idea? Would you do it again? What are the pluses? What are the minuses? And I'm shocked at how people can spend, and look, even, even a service franchise, you know, typically talking about $25,000, $30,000 maybe, that's, that's, that's a fair bit of money to most people. And I'm amazed at the number of people who can spend the money on that. And all they do is listen to a sales pitch and they don't do their their they don't spend even just a few hours doing a bit of research. And the one really good thing about the franchising code, which is on the whole pretty pathetic in my view, it, it's more a gift for lawyers and, and accountants than anything else, is that it does demand that a franchisor gives an advanced list of all the franchisees in the system with their mobile numbers so you can contact them. Right, interesting. Yeah, no, once again, um, um, the, the, the experience you have is, um, yeah, it's priceless for someone looking to get into small business. What I wanted to ask you, and I guess for the audience um, that would be um, list, listening in on our YouTube channel, um, is when, when you describe, say, getting into a franchise, I guess, again, it's value because everybody works hard for their money. Um, you know, it, around, you know, say, $30,000 for someone to start up on their own versus a franchise. Now, in, in your expert opinion, um, through your experience, uh, the success rate, because Jim's group has been around for quite a few decades and, uh, you know, it's a trusted brand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how, how would you, in, in your experience, explain that to someone looking to get in, say, versus a franchise or going independent, you know, going out there and not knowing, no guarantee that they're going to be successful? Um like I said, I would ask them to do their research and decide for themselves. Look, in the beginning, when I just started up, I had a very major competitive VIP. And, and to be honest, one of the main reasons I franchised because they freaked me out. They came in from Adelaide where they were set up and they were successful. They had 250 franchisees. Now, bear in mind those days, I had no, somebody asked me at the beginning how many franchisees I might get one day. And I said, look, if it really works well, I might have a hundred. So I had no clues. I was just finding it. Now, they were running it from a nice, flash office in, in, in somewhere in, in, in a city, Melbourne, not, not in a city, but like, like South Melbourne, somewhere like that. Um, I was running it from my basement, you know, <laughs> and that's how we say to people, why would you buy a business for somebody who works from their basement? 
but what I would do is I would get a list of all the franchisees in my region. This is this is decades before the code of conduct with the phone numbers, and I would give it to the franchisees because when they would say the prospective franchisees would say to me, "Why would I buy a business from you rather than VIP, who's much better established?" Mm. And I said, "Well, look, there's a couple of differences, and I wouldn't I wouldn't bag them at all ever, but." The main thing I want you to do is to take hold of this list. And I want you to go out and I want you to ring as many people as possible and ask them what Jim's is like. And then I want you to go to the VIP and ask their, what they think it's like, what, what yes. their system is like. Um, now, the trouble was I knew that. And that was being a little bit precious because I knew perfectly well they wouldn't give them a list. They would not dare to give them a list of their current franchisees. And I always did. And that was the difference. And that's what did it. It was a simple thing. I approach franchising the same way I approach my clients with the single question, how can you turn somebody, a customer, which a franchisee is essentially a customer of a franchise, how can you turn them into a raving fan? And if yes. you can do that, you're successful at every level. And that was the idea. Yeah, now, no, we're that's yeah. probably bigger than our nearest 20 competitors combined in the service industry. But the same lesson still applies. Yes. Um, and once again, um, yeah, I'm here to back up your claim because at university, um, I've, I've just graduated from Bachelor of Arts. Um, I remember we did a, um, a research paper on, um, doesn't matter what it was on, but it was along the lines of a business. And exactly, we did exactly what you just said. We went to test the competitors and um, in a different sort of um, space. But yes, you're, you're absolutely 100% correct that, um, yeah, you, you've got to research your market. Otherwise, you know, you, you don't know what you're getting into. Again, you, you know, as you said, minimum $60 an hour, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, that's that's very interesting. And um, I wouldn't say when you're starting up, you can necessarily charge that much. Don't forget, we're an established franchise system. I wouldn't suggest that a person going out cleaning, especially inexperienced without a brand, can make that money. But yeah, like I said, I worked for a dollar fifty an hour in the beginning, so I got my experience that way. I didn't know very much, but then I learned more. I mean, I didn't know how to prune. My clients would teach me how to prune. It was just just what I did, and a lot of it was just exercise and outdoors and stuff. It wasn't even particular money making venture. So you've got to got to be realistic when you start a business by yourself, which is certainly possible. It's just it's just it's got its challenges. That's all. Yes, yes. Once, yeah, once again, because, um, you know, a franchise business uh, as like the gyms group, you've got all the support, et cetera, et cetera, the marketing, you've got the call centre and so forth and so forth. And as you said, um, you know, you've got such criminal checks and so forth. So if someone's going on a property, you know, they can rest assured that, you know, they're dealing with someone that's reputable and also that individual comes from a, you know, a company that's, um, you know, got all the backing in the world. Um, and also, you know, all, all the other add-ons. Can, can I also suggest that if you're starting in business, if you're starting business, it's good to be, to have a peer group of some kind. We provide that very intensively in gyms because we have um, franchisor. So a franchisor should ring the franchisee at least monthly and usually more like weekly in the beginning. You have regular meetings where people get together and discuss things. And there's a sense of, it's like an extended family in a way that that sense of and, and people often build bonds they 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 bring each other after hours they make friends they go to barbecues it, it becomes quite tight um if you're not in a franchise the best thing is to be get involved in a industry group like the independent miles association i know the guy who runs that and it, it's, he's a good guy so um if you can find other people who are in your industry and get together with them and just swap ideas and it also helps to give you encouragement moral support is very important because business is wonderful but it can be it can be discouraging at times so you need you need a peer group to back you up you need people who are on your side who are with you that's that's very important you're not working in an office with a group and you know you know or, or you're in a, in a work crew or whatever i mean you've got you don't have you don't have a natural peer group so you've got to go out and find people Yes. Now, once again, va valuable um, information and, and advice based on your experience. Um, yeah, especially, and, and I mean, I, a, a lot of people, um, you know, uh, I guess come from all different backgrounds. As you said, they may not have experience in anything. And as you've mentioned, to have backup team, or in your case, you've got the franchisors, regular meetings, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, uh, knowledge is power, as they say. And uh, the more knowledge you can gain mm. through different people, different experts like yourself in the field, um, you know that 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 adds value to your um, to your business. 
and uh, and also to give value to the clients, which which I think is is paramount. Now, um, j just in conclusion, Jim, um, pe people people that are listening to this on our U on my YouTube channel, um, uh, if they have questions, if they have comments on starting a business, um, to contact uh, the Jim's group. Um, you know, do you have um, uh, up and coming uh, training sessions, people that are looking to get into a business, um, etc. Am I able to um, put a link of the Jim's group down the bottom uh, of my YouTube channel? So if they want to contact uh, the Jim's group, they, they can do yeah. so. Well, our website, www.jims.net. If you go in there, if you're interested in the franchise, you can, you can um, just, you can just enter your information into an inquiry and so forth. Um, and if you, there's also a section called Meet Jim, which is um, the second tab along. If you go into there, you'll actually find a whole heap of information, probably far more than you ever, ever want, which is about um, lots and lots of videos about small business success. Um, there's a copy of my book, Every Customer a Fan, which you can actually download for free. There's also yes. an even audio version of it. Um, so there's a lot of information in there that you could, you could spend hours looking through the stuff, which is all about how to succeed in business. Um, if anybody wants to email me directly, they're welcome to, jim at jims.net. I'm, I'm very easy to reach on email. Actually, every single franchisee in the system has not only my um, email address, but my phone number, which I don't give to outsiders. Um, so they can contact me if they need to. So I'm always happy to answer sort of queries and stuff. Um, <laughs> people are often quite astonished. There was a guy who rang, who contacted the office and he wasn't sure what, um, what, what division he wanted. So they put them on to me. So I rang him back and he said, is this, is this really Jim, the, 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 the founder of Jim's group? I said, yeah, it's me. I do this kind of stuff. So we had a bit of a chat and, and he's going to start training. So that, that was fun. Um, yeah. Good guy. Great, yeah. great, very, very good potential. You can talk, talk to someone and you just know. One of the things we've always been very clear on from the beginning is that we were going to be screen people. We're, we're very selective. You, you, yes. you trial people first, you interview them. In fact, when I train franchisors, I spend the first hour and a half of the training session telling them why they should select and how they, they're going to select people because that's crucial to success. Some people should not be in business for themselves. Yes. We had yes. one. We had one young bloke who actually, I only found out about it by accident because his mother rang me for some advice. He hadn't signed the contract, and she wanted some advice. And I found out that her son was in his early twenties, couldn't find a job, and she was buying him a business. And I said to her, "This is an absolute disaster in the making. There's no. It's almost certain he's going to fail. We cannot sell him a franchise." Now she got very upset. But I said, look, I can help you out. I know some of the guys in your area, which are really overburdened with work. Um, what do they range from to have a job, trialing a job with these people? Yes. So we did that. He went out with them. Guess what? Absolutely hopeless. This poor lady would have blown money she could ill afford. She didn't sound like she was rich. Just trying to find something for her son who just wasn't capable of running their own business. If you can't work for somebody else, you can't work for yourself. Um, by the way, the franchisor who did this decision, who was going to let this person through, has now we've we refused to renew his his regional franchise. He's actually sold his business at a good price, I might say. He made money out of it, but he could not because that was grossly unethical to even to consider someone like that. Yeah, and um, once again, um, I speak from my own experience that that's that's um, that's how I know you, Jim. When you mentioned that, you know, your, your, your email address to contact you, I've always found, and you know, here's the proof today that um, you're more than willing to help email, um, help out, and also you offer value. You know, the Jim's group offers value, as you've just described once again, where um, this poor bloke, you know, definitely not Sue's poor mother would have forked out thirty thousand dollars. Um, but you know, through the code of ethics and and uh, the individual that you are, you know, you, you've you've made a, a statement as you said that he, he he couldn't be in business. You know, and his mother would have blown that money um, had had they gone somewhere else where they would have just taken his money. Um, in in the old days, there was work experience uh, where you know I, I even did work experience in the Westpac Bank branch where they got an insight of. Um, what to do if someone was looking for once again, you know, they contact you on gyms.net um, looking for an opportunity, um, you know, in the gyms group space. Um, 
is there provision to do um, work as, you, as you've just described with one of the franchisees initially to see, you know, they get a feel and if they're suited to it um, and get feedback from yourself or your franchisors, et cetera? Mm. Well, not only, we, we don't just offer it, but we insist on it. If you want to be a franchisee, you've got to be prepared to go out on the road and do some work with somebody for us to have a look at you, but also for you to have a look at the job itself. There's no use buying a business and then discovering you hate it. So you've got to understand what it's like. And, and you know, what do we do? Like mowing lawns, for example, it, it might seem very rustic and happy, but it's actually quite hard work. Yeah. I took a young bloke out <laughs> for a job one day. And by the end of the day, all he could do was just pull the grass clippings from my mower to the boot, uh, to the to the trailer. And he, and he, he said to me, I had no idea mowing lawns was this hard. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah, I but you, look, you can get experience very easily, and, and and so should you. We actually make it very easy. We at, we actually provide training without any strings attached. There was one situation where we had somebody who actually came. He did the franchise. He did the franchisee training. He did the franchise all training. That's a full week of training, which he paid for. It cost a couple thousand dollars. And then some months later, she rang me up and said, "Congratulations! I've just sold my first franchise." And I said, well, I, I, I didn't know you'd joined. <laughs> and she said, no, I didn't. I still have my own independent business. But yeah. that was fine. That's, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's... We don't mind that. We don't, we, in fact, we won't let a person sign as a regional franchise until they pass training. And there's no, there's yeah. no confidentiality. So we've told you anything. Yeah, yeah, no. Once, once again, yeah, I, I, I stand by what you're saying personally because I have used your services. So um, in closing, I want to thank... Um, uh, Jim Penman, the founder and CEO of the Jim's Group, uh, with over 4,200 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand and Canada. And um, yeah, thanks so much for your time, Jim. Um, I'll be putting the links down the bottom, jims.net. They can contact um, you through there. You're offering your email address and so forth. And uh, yeah, we invite any of our listeners. So if you like the content, um, subscribe, comment and uh, to contact Jim. And we look forward, Jim, to... Uh, hosting you again in the future because I think this is a really, really um, in, in insight into small business, but not only um, small business, it's as you've described, you don't take people on unless you're convinced that they, you know, they can do the job. And I think if people want to give it a go, even as, as you've described, like a type of work experience, I mean, that is a great deal, in my opinion, a great deal. I think something too, if anybody would like to ask a question, every third roughly every third monday evening at seven o'clock we yes. run a facebook live session where anybody who likes can send in questions and i'll answer them live and that's the the, the, the good ones the bad ones the curly ones anything um you, you also see a link on that page that i gave you which is um yes. um slash meet jim and you'll see a link to the excellent to the next one there so yeah, yeah that's a possibility too excellent right. so no yeah. worries Thank you, Jim Penman. And uh, yeah, we invite all our listeners, all our subscribers to get on board. Um, and yeah, Jim's more, more than willing to help. And uh, we look forward to hosting you again in the future, Jim. Thank you very much for joining us on moneystream.com.au. My name's John. All the best. Thanks, okay, Jim. Bye for now.